Hi everyone, today we will be talking about uh, HTTP and the web and in HTTP is an application layer protocol. So first look, get a high level overview of HTTP and the, and the web. Now each, each web page is accessed mainly using the HTTP protocol and a web page consists of multiple objects. Now an object in an HTML file could be a JPEG image, a Java applet, an audio file, a video file, it could be a num number of things. Now whenever you access a web page, a web page consists of a base HTML file. The base HTML file includes, <coughs> includes a list of these referenced objects. Now each object is addressed by a URL and a URL could be something like this where some school could be CSUMB, some department could be uh, the CSIT <coughs> department. Now whenever you access a web page, each of these objects are fetched and then these objects are then displayed on the browser. So let's look at it in a little more detail. So you could have, uh, you could you be using a PC or an iPhone or an Android phone, it doesn't matter. And you are say downloading a web page. Say you're going to google.com or you're going to csmb.edu. Now you're using a browser. The browsers, there are multiple browsers that are available. One browser is Firefox, you could use, be using Chrome. All these browsers use the HTTP protocol. Now. HTTP, which is the short form for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uh, uses a client-server model. Now, the, <clears throat> this PC out here, this iPhone, is a client which is using the HTTP protocol to to, serve, to get uh, to take a look at a web page. Now, when the client, what the client does is first sends a request, HTTP request, to the server which hosts the web page, basically which has the web page. So the first, the you and this client here send the HTTP request, then the server sends an HTTP response. Similarly, when the iPhone wants to view some web page, it sends an HTTP request and gets an HTTP response back. So this is the, how an overview of the HTTP protocol. Now, what HTTP uses underneath is TCP. We'll get into details of TCP later. So. <clears throat> But I just want to give you a high level idea. What it does, it uses TCP, which is a reliable transfer, uh, transport level protocol. And to initiate a TCP connection, it uses something called a socket. And we'll get into that. And it also has a port number 80. So HTTP, this is something that you should remember, uses port number 80 uh, to communicate. Now, the server when it accepts the HTTP connection, when the HTTP request is sent, it accepts the TCP connection and then sends an HTTP response back. Once uh, all data transfer has taken place, the TCP connection is closed. Now, HTTP is a stateless protocol. Now, this is a very important concept. This means that HTTP maintains no information about the past client request. So if you are a client and you requested something from a particular server, once that connection has been terminated, the, the server does not remember that that particular client had initiated the connection earlier. So every time a new connection comes in, it treats it as a new request. So it does not maintain any state. It does not have any idea or does not keep any history of what has happened in the past. Now maintaining this, this notion of statelessness is a very important concept. In, in computer networking. And this is perhaps the first example that you can see of a stateless protocol. Now, what this is a design choice that the, that the designers of HTTP made to make the protocol stateless because maintaining state, maintaining past history can be beneficial. I'm not saying that it's not beneficial, it can be beneficial, but then maintaining the state requires some overhead have to store this kind of information, they have to infer something from this information. And they wanted to keep the design of HTTP pretty simple and, and wanted web pages to load pretty fast. That is the reason HTTP was made, one of the reasons I should say, HTTP was, is made stateless. And that is one reason why your browser can support a lot of HTTP requests and you could have multiple tabs open on a Google, uh, on your browser at the same time. Now, with this overview of HTTP, we now look at two different uh, types of HTTP connections. One is a non-persistent HTTP connection, the other is a persistent HTTP connection. In a non-persistent HTTP connection, at most one object can be sent over a 
TCP connection. So you establish a connection, get the object that's needed, and then you close that connection. So if you're downloading multiple objects, you have to create multiple connections. And with each connection, you download one object and then you close that connection. In persistent HTTP, multiple objects can be sent over a single TCP connection. So we'll look at a non-persistent HTTP and persistent HTTP in the next coming slides. So let's look at non-persistent HTTP. So say the user enters this URL, like it goes to some school, some department, home.index. Now it contains, this is the base URL, it contains reference to 10 JPEG images. So these are 10 objects that are, Im that are embedded in this web page and each of those objects has to be fetched. Now, in case of non-persistent HTTP, first, the client is going to initiate a TCP connection to the server. And remember, it's going to do it through port 80. Now, the server, which has the web page for some school.edu, is waiting on TCP <coughs> for a TCP connection on port 80, and it accepts this TCP connection. So that's the first step is initiate. The client initiates a TCP connection, and the second step, the server accepts it. Once the server has accepted the TCP connection, what the client does is it sends an HTTP request message into the, into the TCP socket, okay? And that request, and what is this request message? It's basically, it contains some department, a home.index. What it's saying is, I want this particular object. Now, the server sends a response back containing the requested object and then sends it. So, so this after the, the client has received it, the HTTP server is going to close that connection. The HTTP <coughs> client now, the client once it receives the HTML file, it parses and it finds 10 different JPEG objects. And each of, for each of these uh, 10 different JPEG objects, it has to establish a new connection. And for two, in each of these connections, only one object is going to be downloaded. So, so <clears throat> from steps one to five is for getting the base HTML file. Now, if you have to get the 10 objects, remember that the <clears throat> in non-persistent, remember that the web page had 10 embedded JPEG images. Now for each of these embedded images, the HTTP connection has to be set up. Um, and in one connection, only one of those objects can be downloaded. So you have to repeat one steps one to five for the 10 JPEG objects. So this is how a non-persistent HTTP works. Now, let's try to analyze this, <clears throat> the working of non-persistent HTTP. Now, first, to do any analysis, we need some definitions. And let's look at RTT, which is round trip time. It's the, round, it's the time taken to go to the server and back. So this is an RTT. So here is a connect, initiate TCP connection. So it goes here and then it comes back from the server. So this entire time is RTT, okay? Now, in to if you want, if you let me let's to analyze the <clears throat> the time taken for a non-persistent HTTP connection. First, there is a TCP connection. Okay, the first the TCP connection is established, and then a request for the file is sent, and then the file itself is transmitted. After this, this TCP connection is disconnected. So as you can see, there are two RTTs. One for is for the first initial TCP connection establishment. And then there's another RTT for sending the request for, and then for the file to come back. Now, for the initial bits of the file to come back, if, I'm, if, I, <coughs> if I say it correctly, then there's also some additional time for the entire file or that entire object to be downloaded. So in non-persistent HTTP, the total response time is going to be RTT plus RTT, that's two RTT, but the total file transmission time. So there is twice RTT, the, <coughs> the amount of time that's needed as an overhead to just transmit one file. So, so the, in not persistent HTTP, you need two RTTs per object <clears throat> to download each object. And that is the overhead for non-persistent. That, that is something that's amount of time that's wasted. You are not downloading any file during that time. So we, so non-persistent <clears throat> HTTP has this disadvantage that it's slow. And hence, we come to persistent HTTP. In persistent HTTP, the server leaves the connection open after sending the first response. So if 
the client has multiple response requests to send, it does not have to establish a connection each time. So it, it just sends a request and gets the response back. So what, what, what will happen is you can get rid of one of those RTTs. So instead, of, instead of having two RTTs, you can get a one RTT because you don't need to establish the TCP connection and the total time additional overhead needed is only a single RTT connection because you don't need to establish the connection and in, persi in persistent HTTP as a connection is always on. So now that we have understood what persistent and <clears throat> non-persistent and persistent HTTP are, let's look at in a little bit more detail as to what an HTTP request message looks like. So the get is a command and you could have other commands like post and head. It's basically the beginning of the request line and this is the file that you're requesting. <clears throat> HTTP 1.1 is basically the version of the HTTP protocol. These are a bunch of header lines and all this <clears throat> is written in plain English. So HTTP request message is sent in plain English. For example, it says that the user agent here is Firefox, which says is that the the browser that's being <laughs> that is being accessed is Firefox. The host that's been accessed is, for example, net.cs.umas.edu. So this is the <clears throat> this is how an HTTP request message looks like, which the client sends to the server. Now, I wouldn't get into too much detail about this HTTP message. All I want to say is this is where the URL. There is a <clears throat> there is this is how the header looks like, and there is space for specifying the URL. And there's a bunch of other <clears throat> information that has to be specified. Now, the, you, the, the most important message that is used to get a URL is the get method. But then there are also some other methods like post and head. So I would I will strongly rec uh, recommend that all of you look into the get method in greater detail. Okay, so... <clears throat> As I said, is HTTP the first 1.0 has get, post, and head. 1.1 has get, post, head, and put, and it also has delete. It's the most important message is get, and get is used basically to retrieve. <clears throat> it's basically you get and you specify the name of the URL. That means you're trying to retrieve files from that particular URL. Okay, so one we looked at the HTTP request message. Now response is going to be sent back from the server back to the client. That's also going to be in English or ASCII, it's human readable form. And this is an idea how a HTTP, sample HTTP response message looks like. As you can see, the first line here <coughs> specifies the protocol. And we'll get into this 200 OK, what that means in the next slide. And then there is a date saying when the, when the file was requested. It also says there's this last modified, which says when the law file in the server was last modified. It also says the kind of <clears throat> OS the server is running, like CentOS, and the kind of server, like Apache, and so on. What's the length of the content? So it gives a lot of information in the HTTP response message. Now, in the previous slide, I just mentioned that there is this 200 OK message. So here we look at 200 OK message. So these are some of the sample codes. There are a few other codes, but I'll just briefly mention the important ones. 200 OK message means a request was received successfully and there, there is a requester op object being sent in the later part of the message. A 301 says that the object has been permanently moved from the server. Uh, if it's a 400 ma message, it would say that this request is not understand, understood by the server. And something like 404 means that this document is not available from at this server. So 301 and 4, <coughs> for, for me, 201 means that the object has moved and there is a new location. The server is aware of that location and, the, and it specifies where the location is. In 404, it just says that it does not know that this object is not, is the document is not and the server does not know where to get the document. So you could try HTTP client side for yourself. You could use Telnet, and here is a here are a bunch of instructions, and you could just Telnet to this um, uh, cis.poly.edu at port 80. Remember, port 80 is the port used by HTTP, and then you could uh, use the GET message and and try to get and use this URL, and it's going to download something. Okay, and 
as <clears throat> you've been using Wireshark throughout uh, this course, so you could use Wireshark as well to, to take a look at the captured HTTP and, uh, response and request. And I'll be giving you additional assignments to do work on Wireshark, but this is something that you could try and try to figure it out on your own. Now with that, I'll, I will stop today's lecture. In the next class, we will start off by talking about cookies.